Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday, January 8th meeting of January 8th, 2020. Uh, welcome to the new year. Uh, meeting of the Board of Selectmen at 631. Um, next order of business is public comments. Seeing none, we'll move into correspondence. And the, um, I gave you the information that we got from the claims. We got that, we get that every year. And that's why in this year's, the current year's budget, we actually put in uh, $500 uh, for that. And just to uh, review quickly, uh, there was, uh, so McLean's has provided the Meals on Wheels program. Uh, it's the only nonprofit uh, meal delivery program serving uh, Avon Canton, East Granby, Granby, and Sunsbury. No one has ever denied service because of the inability to pay, and more than 60% of the meals are provided at a reduced rate. In East Granby, that was 2,282 meals last year with 14 recipients. Uh, the, uh, there were uh, six that, uh, that paid, uh, uh, a, uh, actually eight paid a reduced rate, and six paid uh, the normal rate. Um, the, Basically, you have 14 recipients. And that's basically what it is. The, uh, when there's a meal, it actually includes one hot and one cold meal. Um, so it, it is actually more than 2,282 meals. So uh, we have that in the budget item as a $500 uh, item that we approved in last year's budget. So we'll send them the $500 based on this. Uh, letter. Jim, if people want to participate in this, is there any way they can find out how to do that? I mean, do they call this person, Victoria, or maybe you can find out? Well, um, actually, what I would suggest is that they would call uh, our social services director, Elise Kosker, and then Elise will put them in touch with the okay. right person. Just one question. East Cranby shows 2,282. Granby 1,846. East Granby being so much smaller, is there a reason why it's used more, or is that? I don't, uh, I, I can surmise, I don't, I don't have a. What do you surmise? Uh, the, they have 16 recipients, uh, we have 14, so uh, there was probably less getting, uh, there were probably less getting meals than us. You know, or they started over the later course in the of year, time. Maybe. Yeah, could be the later year, or, or there's just, uh, uh, you know, you're right with a bigger town. Why it's not, there's not the coverage there. Maybe there's a different program there too. They do have, um, you know, some luncheons there on a consistent basis and that might offset it. Okay. I think that's probably the answer. Okay. Uh, got a CCM capital report. Uh, they uh, just highlighted the fact that uh, in the December special session, there was a hospital agreement uh, between the state of Connecticut and the Connecticut Hospital Association. Uh, they um, also, uh, the legislative committee was uh, uh, held, uh, the meeting was held by CCM in December. Key recommendations uh, support the efforts of a, to implement a bipartisan plan to address identified transportation infrastructure needs maintain funding for key municipal uh, infrastructure grants such as uh, Town Aid Road, Low SIP, and Lot SIP, and develop a pilot program to allow uh, municipalities to utilize photographic uh, traffic enforcement technology, which is an interesting concept. The, uh, December tax collectors, uh, Report is here. The, um, the collection rate uh, last year at this time was 68.15%. The collection rate this year is 70.03, uh, or an increase of 1.88%. Uh, it could be prepayments of people doing tax uh, planning, uh, pl plus also we were running ahead because we had the tax sale. Mm -hmm. Um, not that I'm looking to start any issues or anything, but I, uh, there was, I, I was at a meeting where Bark Hampstead was talking about uh, an ordinance that they uh, have enacted uh, because they have a problem with feeding of bears. Um, 
I'm not aware of a significant bird feeding issue, a bear feeding issue uh, here, uh, but I just thought that since I saw it, I'd provide the information to you in case we ever need to take a look at it. Okay. Um, Mira had its meeting this morning, uh, which to start to talk about uh, what the future is of trash removal. Um, just to not wear anybody out, but it just hit some of the highlights. Um, it was a very good presentation. The, it's a very good PowerPoint. Um, the basically uh, uh, the state uh, le between the legislature and, and Deep uh, wanted a process to happen to look at replacement technology for the current plant, uh, trash and energy plant. Uh, uh, the uh, DEEP did the RFP and chose Sassir Rooney, and Sassir Rooney um, and Mira have been uh, working on a, an agreement, uh, and it's like about 18 months for the agreement to happen. It's pretty complicated. L uh, they originally thought uh, with that there would be a $65 tip fee. Um, the uh, once they did their due diligence, they realized that that wasn't the case, and they uh, there was more investment that was going to be needed. Uh, and um, this often the this particular agreement is uh, if it gets approved and signed, would be about a hundred and forty-five dollars per ton. Um, and I'll go through that in a second. Uh, one of the things that, uh, so it would require a $330 million capital investment by Mira, uh, and projected fee would be $145. Uh, there, um, you know, it would be 30 years of reliable uh, service, um, and there would not be any full faith and credit risk for municipalities, of which the previous 30-year uh, agreement that stopped in 2013 uh, the towns did have to uh, put f uh, full faith and credit behind it, um, and they, there would continue to be zero tipping fee on recycling. Uh, if you flip to page six, um, Connecticut has no significant uh, waste to energy capacity available, and uh, they, we don't have any uh, active uh, landfills in the state. Um, then if you flip to page seven, uh, the um, Tipping fees are uh, at $145, uh, would exceed the market, and it's understood to, to be unacceptable to municipal customers. Um, and then if you flip to page eight, uh, to be competitive at, say, $95 a ton tipping fee, the project requires additional revenue. Possible options would be the general obligation bond, uh, which would be state-backed. Uh, for the renovation and refurbishment of the publicly owned facility or a power, um, perhaps more likely, a power purchase agreement to provide additional electric power uh, revenue at 11 cents a kilowatt hour. Currently, Miro receives about 4 cents for what is, uh, uh, what is generated. Or the uh, creation of renewable energy credits, uh, which are called RECs, um, and uh, again, those, those are some of the sources that would um, get the fee down from 145 down to a more competitive market price of 95. Um, or absent this revenue, statewide law and regulation restricting or taxing export of waste from Connecticut, in other words, you wouldn't be able to ship it out. Currently, if you, um, uh, if you, put it on a, uh, on a train or a truck and send it to Ohio or Pennsylvania, uh, it's going to be running about $90, $95. Uh, so that's why they think the $95 would be the, the market price. Uh, that's without having any environmental discussions of really, do, do you, you want to put uh, trash in a hole or do you want to do it uh, uh, more responsibly with, with a trashed energy plant. If you did, a, the most efficient system currently with the technology is a mass burn unit, uh, and that would be in excess of $600 million. So that's why the, the thing being looked at right now is it's $330 million project. Uh, if the, um, so what's next is Mira will engage state government and provide, propose alternative revenue options to them. 
uh, there will, um, probably in a couple of weeks I'll receive a packet which I'll share with, with the Board of Selectmen that will say to us, we need to know whether you will be uh, committing any tonnage to us. And so, and, and, and it may say 95 or or $100. We as a Board of Selectmen with the information packet will discuss it and decide it, it would be non-binding and we would decide whether we wanted to have them continue uh, having our tonnage total in their, uh, in, with MIRA. And if that was the case, they're looking for a critical mass of at least 550,000 tons. Uh, from all the different uh, 50 towns that, that are serviced by MIRA. And uh, so uh, uh, that would show if there's economic viability. If everybody says no, then the project doesn't go forward. Uh, if uh, everybody says, yeah, $9,500 uh, that we'd be interested in, then the other thing is, okay, well, you, you're at 145. So to get it down to 95 or 100, it needs the help from the legislature, and uh, and those you know the, those three or four items that I, that I talked about. So regardless of what happens with that, we have a contract with them through 2027, where they need to provide uh, the service uh, to us. Uh, but it's you know what price that would be. So it, it, today's meeting was an informational meeting. It, the slides are really good. Uh, and uh, the, as a result of the informational meeting, two or three weeks, uh, we'll get some information packet uh, that we'll discuss, and then we would have to uh, make a commitment uh, by uh, probably May or June of whether we were going to go forward uh, with a 30-year uh, contract with with Mira. Uh, they would, you know, if they're saying 100. 95 or a hundred dollars per ton and then if it happens that uh, uh, the state legislature doesn't give any any um, accommodation to help with the funding then it would still be at 145 and the deal would fall and be null and void so it's um, it's trash <laughs> it's got to be messy um, it, we know the prices are going to go up um, they're anticipating that it's probably uh, the new uh, rate's going to be $91 in the upcoming year um, per ton. It's currently $83 per ton. So uh, there's a lot of good information. Uh, there's not a great solution at this point. Uh, and uh, if the, this deal is to happen, uh, it would have to have some state participation um, to make it reasonable. At 95, it's close to the market rate if it's at 145 it's out of market rate and all two towns including ourselves i'm sure would be inclined to say no at 145 dollars so um so that's where we're at at this point from reading all everything in this powerpoint it doesn't look like this is viable from even the very beginning because i don't think any project that's even quasi public ever goes you know on budget they're always over budget so probably be a lot more than 145 and it includes monies from the state and all sorts of stuff so well, no the, the 145 doesn't include any money from the state well they said they needed bonding to keep it at 145 well it, um, what page the 330 the, uh, what page capital what, which page, page well, slide 11 number six I mean from from reading everything here this doesn't look like it's gonna work it, well, it, it's, not gonna, it's, not gonna, well it's not going to it's not going to it's not going to work at 145 right uh, the uh, I mean they're telling us that that if everything goes as planned it'll be 145 and they're going to try to get it down below that by forcing us to buy electricity at above market rates or taxing well, or general obligation bonds that would be paid back with tax dollars right We're, so, which which one we on which well the one right there 330 million capital right okay so, so that's. I mean, I just don't see any of this working. I mean, well, th there's th a, there th is an alternative right now to train it out of here, and that's between eighty-five and ninety-five dollars a ton in 2023 dollars. So, that's it, probably going to be the best way to go. Well, it, um, yeah, we'll we'll get more information and look at it. But I'm still struggling with 
where it's going to be more than 330 million. Well, didn't they say if they go to single stream, it'll be 600 million? If that or was a, a mass no, burn. that was a mass burn. Right. If, well, the, the mass burn project was looked at and is not one that's considered viable. So right. it's the $330 million. Right, and that's, you know, today's estimate. You know how projects always go. They always go well, over. Well, they're, I th they, they have some faith in the numbers. Mm. Well, but, I mean, but and have a lot to talk about. And though. how are we on the hook until 2027? Are we required to send our trash to them till 2027, no matter what the cost is, or? No, no we, okay. we have the option to opt out. Okay which is why they're working very hard to get it at a market rate. Also, what MIR has always uh, been able to do is MIR has always been used as the cap rate, so it's helped keep pr trash prices down because the private folks can't go above the MIR rate, so it's always helped keep uh, uh, trash disposal reasonably, uh, 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 Reason, more reasonable than it would be if it was just a, a, an open market. So um, lots to think about, lots to do. Uh, the $330 million uh, project uh, would uh, take care of things for the next 30 years. Uh, it would be, uh, uh, you know, it's certainly not viable for the town of East Granby uh, at $145, but if it's in the market rate, it's certainly something to consider, especially when we're not paying for tipping. And if we went out into, uh, if we left Mira, we'd have to pay, I'm sorry, for recycling. We'd have to pay the tip fee for recycling. So, uh, you know, there's there's different costs uh, that are involved. So, more to come. Go. Yeah, just a couple of things. Where does Hartford stand on this? Do they have, have they indicated anything? When I go to these Central Connecticut Solid Waste Authority meetings, it, they seem to imply that Hartford really isn't a supporter of this? Or? That's, Hartford would like to see it somewhere else, and they would not like to see it in Hartford, the plant. Um, the, uh, uh, they, they have uh, roughly 35,000 tons uh, that they uh, take care of every year. Uh, so they, you know, I mean, you know, they could decide not to participate in the project. Uh, if, um, if one of the reasons why the rebuilding of it, it, it makes a lot of sense is you can do that under the current permit. Uh, if you moved it somewhere else, uh, you'd have to go through the permitting process all over again. Uh, and that's you know a three to five year process sometimes. Uh, Hartford, um, in, in you know in their mind's eye, would like you know it's it's near the river. Uh, you know they'd like to see some sort of development in that area that would be you know either commercial or residential or a mixed development. So the uh, you know and the uh, the MDC uh, you know, fac uh, factory <laughs> MDC so its disposal is there. I guess it is a factory, <laughs> and uh, and you know, so if there was just the MDC there and there was uh, not the, the uh, uh, trash to energy plant there, there, there perhaps might be some, some opportunity for them to do some development. So the mayor has been, the mayor is an ad hoc member of the committee. Uh, I'm a full member of the committee. Uh, uh, and um, the, uh, uh, the, the mayor has been you know, very vocal in the fact that he'd like to see it somewhere else. Uh, and also has uh, brought up a reasonable point of, uh, you know, is this, you know, the best technology? Well, right now it's the best technology that's there other than the mass burn. Mass burn would be better, but some other uh, cutting edge uh, things like taking things out of the waste stream prior to it going to a mass burn unit or a trash energy plant, that technology is really still in the infancy, so. Okay. You did see in here that Hartford wants four million dollars a year just to have it in their town too. So well, there's, there, there's kind of like their way of buying into it. Well, yeah, it's uh, just to be fair to Hartford, it's uh, Hartford would want a lot more than four million. Okay. Uh, four million, and currently it's a million, million and a half. Um, part of the legislation said that you know there needed to be more money to go 
to you, Hartford, as being a host city, and that number was determined to be four million dollars. Uh, you know, Hartford would be looking at two or three, would want to see two or three times that, I'm sure. Hmm. I don't know. I just hope they don't stop looking at training it out or trucking it out because I think that's the route we're probably going to end up having to go. I, well, no, I, I, and you know, if that was the case, uh, and you know, if everything fell flat, and that was the option that had to be there, there'd be six to ten million dollars that would have to be uh, uh, invested in a, a modal, you know, situation where you could truck things out on rail cars. So you'd have right. to, and there's some other issues that they'd have to resolve. But they are certainly looking at all options because, in the end, their uh, Mira is obligated to provide trash disposal service. Right. Anything else, Joe? No, that's it. Um, gave you a full copy uh, rather yeah. than uh, printed in here of the uh, CCM uh, Town and Country uh, book that they periodically send to us. It's a lot of good information in here. Yeah, uh, there is. There is a lot of good information. Uh, yeah. well, yep. One big thing that sticks out is the uh, Pension deficit in Connecticut, 124.9 billion dollars oh, and staggering. growing, he, yes. and they're not doing anything about it. Huge and staggering are two good terms. Right. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, they're not. Uh, they haven't come up with a solution. Another thing in here is like their goal is to try to reduce Connecticut property taxes by 25 percent. Mm. Sure as hell doesn't look like that's going to happen. Well, that's you know that's CCM, which is the <laughs> Uh, you know, municipalities uh, of which we remember, uh, certainly you have to have things to shoot for and to talk about. Tammy was legislator? Yes. Yeah, yes. I saw that. Tammy nice. Zawistowski was the legislator. Recognition of the, the year. Of the year. One of the, there was a, a couple legislators, legislators rather, that were honored and congratulations to Tammy. And it's nice. Tammy, at, 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 the, uh, at the award ceremony, I sat with Tammy and uh, as we were having dinner, and then she was called up and honored, and good yes. for her. Yeah. Congratulations. And yes. uh, okay, the um, uh, general government financials for November 2019. Uh, I don't have December, I just received December today. Um, and one of the things, John, that you were looking for was more narrative, so I, I gave a lot more narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I identified anything that was trending unfavorable to budget or anything that's trending on budget but appears to be unfavorable due to annualized costs, which were booked in the beginning of the fiscal year. Uh, the actual, uh, right now, trending unfavorable to budget is data, um, which, uh, it, which is um, line 1300, which is $7,500 unfavorable to budget, and the um, fire marshal line, which is $500 unfavorable to budget. Everything else is just explaining why they're high or low uh, compared to uh, if you looked at the average at that particular time of 41.5% consumption of the finances. Now, those two lines that are unfavorable, those were increased quite a bit last year, weren't they? I know fire marshal was. Uh, data, I believe, was also. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I do know we did increase because we added some hours uh, right, to for the fire marshal. Right. Um, 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 I'll, I'll take a look at data. But yeah. overall, we're not over on anything. Mean. No, overall, we're slightly under budget uh, and we're trending slightly under budget for the month of November, through the month of November. I um, highlighted because I, at the time I could see it coming is there's, you know, there's some uh, fire department uh, repairs uh, that are going to show up in the December financials and um, some snowstorms are going to show up in the December financials for uh, public works. But I don't, can't quantify for that for you right now. The, um, I haven't done my usual spreadsheet on the December activity for the police, but I, uh, in which I will do, uh, is, uh, but I did get the raw data information which I provided. Uh, there was 1,189 calls for service. There was uh, 12 accidents with a report. There was 40 medical assists. Uh, there was four domestics, two criminal impersonations. Uh, that's usually credit card uh, identity theft. 
uh, larceny uh, to DCF assistance to two disturbances, one harassment and one burglary. Uh, just uh, on a side, I've noticed from time to time Greg comments on Facebook and he seems to do a really nice job with that answering questions, putting something up that he feels is important. So yes, he does. I, I don't know if that's a relatively new thing that he's doing or it had been done before, but it's really nice. That is a relatively new thing that he is doing. It's very nice. Um, gave you uh, some uh, information from the network uh, who uh, wrote a very nice thank you note to the town and the residents. Uh, for their participation in the Stuff a Cruiser event. Uh, and we got some really great notes uh, from uh, families, uh, thank you notes and everything that I, I thought was uh, of interest and I included in the packet. And my thanks to, uh, to uh, there's a, uh, I won't say her full name, I'll just say Deborah, uh, who uh, works uh, over at Windsor Locks, uh, as a civilian with the state police, and um, and Greg Caps uh, uh, publicized and had the cruiser available, and we've done it like three or four years in a row now, wow. and it was very successful. And my thanks to all the residents and to Deborah and to uh, to Greg uh, and everyone else that helped and participated. <coughs> the um, Hazardous waste collection happened uh, this past fall, uh, and uh, the, um, there was quite a uh, jump in usage. So in 2018, we had 48 cars that went to Windsor Locks where we do a joint collection with them. Uh, this year was 107. Uh, previous highest number was uh, of usage was 85 cars in 2015. So. Um, with a corresponding uh, amount of usage, it's probably a correspondingly higher price. Usually it costs us about $8,000 a year, which I budget for. So we'll see how much it comes in, and I would think that it'll probably come over budget. Um, it's just some of the uh, household hazardous waste items that were collected. Uh, two cubic yard boxes of aerosols, four 55-gallon uh, drums of acid, Four 55-gallon drums of antifreeze. Now this, you know, is Windsor Locks, East Granby, and um, anyone that is, uh, of the participating town: Bloomfield, East Hartford, Hartford, Newington, Rocky Hill, West Hartford, Wethersfield, and Windsor um, uh, are able to participate um, at any of these. So. Uh, at this point, um, you know, that wasn't just Windsor Locks and East Grammy that generated all this stuff, but it certainly uh, is, uh, is a, a large amount of things. And like I said, it's, it's, it's more items than uh, more cars that participated, which means more residents participated. Uh, there was 49 fire extinguisher cylinders. There was nine 55-gallon uh, drums and seven cubic yard boxes of flammable liquids. I won't read everything. There was five 55-gallon uh, uh, drums of motor oil. So there was uh, plenty of things that were uh, 14 55-gallon drums of pesticide. So. Now, how do they know uh, which town they come from? Do they look they, at everybody's uh, driver's license? They, they, okay. you, they card everybody, John. Okay. They card everybody. So it's not like we're going to be charged for non-residents. Uh, no, we're not. They okay. have a system and a process in place. And also we had uh, East Granby folks there. We had, uh, uh, I think it was two uh, uh, DPW guys w were there. Uh, so um, it's got a good process. It's well controlled. Right. And those are ours. Right. But I thought the same thing when I saw one under the right. seven. Right. <laughs> I mean, there are some things that they collect that even our recycling center collects, like, you know, motor oil. Yeah. You don't have to wait for that. Our, our place is open for motor oil recycling, CFL bulbs, um, batteries, a lot of things that we can bring here, we can just bring to our recycling center. Absolutely. And we're not, you know, we, by the nature of the report, we really don't know how much of that was generated in East Grand. Right. 
And then I also, as an extra, included the uh, Metro Hartford Future Executive Summary. Uh, it's uh, towards accelerating shared and sustained growth, uh, economic growth. I just received that. Uh, it's some good information in there, um, and I've uh, passed it on to our Economic Development Commission. Okay. A lot of data in there. A lot of interesting data, too. It's the insurance capital of the world. We're still the number one state with insurance jobs per capita. Uh, they've got like 15 different things that they, they highlighted as part of trying to establish a brand. Uh, Harvard region cost of living is 21% less than Boston, 34% less than New York City, uh, but it's uh, higher than the average for the state of Connecticut, I believe. Um, within an 80 hour drive from Hartford, you'll find 20% of the U.S. gross uh, GDP, 60% of the Canadian GDP, and 106 million people and 42 million jobs. Uh, to, in uh, in the Metro Hartford area, there's about a million people. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting reading in here, it looks yeah. like. Okay, the, uh, also the, the other addition was from the Secretary of State, who um, uh, did two paragraphs on G. It's really nice that, uh, about how well the elections went in 2020 and uh, in 2019. Things were smooth, and by the way, in 2020, we want to continue that. Um, since 2016, our state and nation have faced the threat of foreign interference. And then the third paragraph is the reason for the letter. Unfortunately, very reasons our elections are secure come with a definite cost. Over the coming weeks and months, you will likely be receiving funding requests from your registrars and town clerk for election-related spending. So um, I don't know exactly what that means or how much <laughs> that would be, but when you get a letter saying, hey, the bill might be coming, I thought I'd share it with you, both of you. Hopefully it's just the regular bills. Yes. <laughs> Uh, next order of business is the minutes uh, for December 18th. Make a motion we approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that an eye job? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Unanimous. Yeah. Why, is there something that I missed? <laughs> no, no, not at all. It's just usually you were very quick to chime in and you didn't. Oh. I didn't hear you chiming in. The, um, we didn't had to make sure you weren't having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until we get to the refunds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I do have some information regarding the refunds when we get there. <laughs> Okay, uh, old business, tax incentives, uh, nothing new. We're, like I said, we're going to start working on that. School town building uh, uh, update is uh, there's uh, still finishing up some things at the middle school, high school, and over at public safety. Uh, and, uh, but we are in the process of winding down. We have another meeting uh, uh, scheduled at the building committee tomorrow. Now we'll get to Joe's favorite, which is refunds, <laughs> uh, six, uh, six A new business. So uh, there was um, the first thing to talk about is uh, is the addition uh, of uh, there's twenty six thousand twenty three dollars um, the uh, so the uh, and that's for uh, uh, from uh, people's bank it's uh, the uh, building is the center shops and its own. Uh, by uh, the Fish uh, Corporation, and they paid the tax bill of $26,023, and the management company uh, also paid it. So there's $26,000 too much that we received. $26,023.52. There's also uh, a, a EAN Holdings, which is Enterprise. Um, there was a car that uh, most of the year was licensed in Florida, so uh, there was a certificate of correction, and they overpaid $927.89. Uh, 
there was um, another uh, enterprise uh, was on uh, $381, $291.19. Uh, then moving into the uh, Hanrahan's, they paid the supplemental bill and uh, it, they uh, also um, had a credit from before. So when you add up the overpayments, it was $206.86. And there's a $377.52 from a, uh, a resident who is active military and gets the military exemption. And the last two are, uh, are uh, let's see, one is $20.96 and uh, and the uh, and that's on a vehicle, and the other is $195.16, uh, cents, which was overpayment of real estate tax. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. I just hope it doesn't affect uh, Dorian's numbers <laughs> that she just gave us. <laughs> the the 26000 goes back to whom? goes back to the management slash mortgage company, People's Bank. So it goes back to People's? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll second that motion. Any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I was hoping not to do that. I just dropped my microphone, so my apologies to uh, anyone, if there's a loud, loud sound, hopefully there wasn't. No, the sounds uh, here, not in the. You're, you're <laughs> right, but, but there could have been some static or something. Right. Uh, the um, just wanted to talk about the uh, our, our board of selectmen meeting dates. Uh, this year, the board of finance got creative in their activity calendar, and um, so some of four of their meetings are going to be. Uh, our Board of Selectmen meeting will be after their Board of Finance meeting. Uh, the uh, January, their, their meeting is January 21st to where they're going to discuss a lot of different things, but budget drivers uh, uh, they're going to discuss. And uh, our meeting is 122, so it's the day after. So we could have a special meeting on, on uh, January 20th, but I don't know if that conflicts with the Board of Education or not. Uh, where we would, uh, you know, just make sure that we discuss uh, what uh, we see as budget drivers going forward. Uh, that, um, or we could let it be. Um, the uh, and then in February, uh, their meeting is February 11th, and ours is the 12th. Uh, again, we could uh, be February 10th. If anything, I think the, you know, a short meeting on the budget drivers um, would probably be more beneficial and necessary than than having a, you know, a, um, a meeting on the 10th, but we could certainly do that. And then um, the uh, April 7th, where they're gonna provide directives to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Ed for public hearing presentation, our meeting is April 8th. And we're always ahead of them so that, you know, we have, uh, you know, finished our discussion of what we're making and presenting. Uh, so I, I think, again, that would be one that I would think that we'd want to have a special budget meeting on April 1st. Um, and then there's a, um, it's, uh, June 10th uh, is our Board of Selectmen meeting and June 9th is theirs. Um, we you know, may want to, you know, as we get closer, we may want to look at options. But I mean, we can handle some of the stuff in May that we normally do, year end transfers, uh, capital account closure. I mean, those are all things that, that you know, are routine that we could do at our May meeting. Right, we can just do it on the last meeting of the month. Yeah, our, our May, May meeting, right. our last May meeting. I mean, the only thing I do see is for January 21st, if we're supposed to present budget drivers and I think it's got to come from the board not just which is why I'm suggesting that we have a special meeting all right I guess we need to have a special meeting so the um, uh, you know I mean is there a conflict on the 20th or do we want to look at a different date I mean, than previous week? there could be but if we have it at 630 I think it should be fine it shouldn't be that long right correct correct or maybe even six yeah we, I mean it's special so we can pretty much we can have it any time we want right yeah. I mean, I'm not sure when the Board of Ed is, but it probably is that day. Actually, no. 
because it's on the 13th and I think the 27th, so the 20th should be okay. But if we have it earlier, that's fine with me. Joe, right. six o'clock, so we'll say six o'clock. Yeah. And then, um, like I said, I don't see as much significance in, in the February uh, situation. Uh, the, uh, and then, uh, you know, certainly we want to meet on April 1st. And we can do that in normal time. So we're adding the meeting on the 20th. And what other meetings are we adding? So we're going to have a meeting on the 20th. Yeah. So, uh, Plus our regular meeting on the 22nd. Yeah. Well, we could do that, uh, or we could have just a regular meeting. I'll just change the date. Yeah. Okay. And and cancel, having, the, cancel the 22nd. Right. Okay. All right. Okay, and then... Um, then uh, the, uh, there would be a special budget meeting that we would want to do on April 1st, and we would just concentrate on the budget there, so we would have a f April 8th meeting, too. So we're having a meeting on April 1st, yeah. and that's going to be at 6.30? Yes. We're not doing anything on February 10th. Where are we? February, no, well, I, I don't, um, they're going to review uh, the grand list. They're going to update the five-year model. Uh, they're going to provide operating guidelines to us. Um, so, it, you know, it, it, we don't have to have a meeting before them for all of that because we're going to be responding to what they give okay. us. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so. So, so no, I don't think we need to have it on the 10th. I okay. think we can still and keep it on the 12th. And we're canceling the 22nd. Correct. Okay. Okay, Jim, if you can have that changed on the town calendar, that'd be great. Too. I, I, I certainly will. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna meet on the January 20th instead. We're going to, on the April 1st, we're going to meet April 1, and, and at this point we'll meet April 8th. If we don't have to, we can cancel that. Okay. And I think that does it. Sounds good. The, uh, because there are going to be special meetings, I don't think we need to take any vote or anything. I just wanted a consensus to make sure that, so. All right. Okay. We just have to have the uh, agenda as required so that we don't have any additions or... Correct. We just follow the letter of the right. law on the agenda. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, we're uh, on the reappointments uh, for the town clerk, uh, the uh, Kristen Gallagher, um, treasurer uh, Kelly Jacobs, uh, assessor Mary Ellen Brown, and tax collector um, Dorian Owens. Um, the um, uh, their appointment lasts the two-year period, uh, and uh, when we come new, they also get reappointed. Uh, all four are doing outstanding jobs. Uh, we're well blessed to have the folks that we have in in this particular those particular positions, and uh, we are well served. And they're all interested in continuing on, correct? Yes, they are. Okay. So I make a motion we reappoint all four. Second there. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, unanimous. Um, no public comment. We'll move into the executive session for a very short executive session, which um, um, we, no votes will be taken, and uh, uh, we will come back shortly. So we need a motion to, to executive session at 7.15. I'll make that motion. Second. You're saying this is for personnel matter? Yes. Okay. 